All right. So, today is Monday, February 13th, and they released a second news post today. I've already done a video today on the studio updates and the roadmap going forward. However, a few hours later, they released this one, and we have got World vs. World Objective Scaling Rewards. Hello, Mist Dwellers. Today, we're going to talk more about World v. World reward changes. This is a big topic and one you've brought to our attention many times. We've considered several ways to improve how you are rewarded for your time spent in World v. World, and while this isn't everything we have planned, it's a big part of it. Without more build-up, let's talk about the objective scaling reward system. So, just pausing really briefly here about the rewards. Well, I don't know if this is exactly what they're talking about, but uh, my time in World v. World is usually spent as either A, a longbow ranger hiding in the back and just shooting people because I don't feel like dying, or B, a healing scrapper. I'm running with a pile of people and spamming heals because green numbers makes me go, ah, you get the idea. When I'm on my scrapper, I get n like no rewards. When I'm on the ranger, just spamming longbow abilities, you know, barrage, I am getting hundreds and hundreds of loot bags. On my scrapper, I get nothing for keeping all those people alive. Uh, so one issue that they have talked about in previous Guild Wars 2 um, talks is that they know that healers are not rewarded at all. Uh, I would love to see that fixed. Don't know if that's going to be covered in this update. I'm pointing at my monitor, but you guys see it up there. Uh, however, I that's one of the immediate things I think of that has a big glaring problem when it comes to the reward system. Let's continue. What are objective scaling rewards? In a nutshell, these are additional rewards for participating in objective events in World v. World, assaulting or defending kit towers, keeps, and castles specifically. The more these objectives are upgraded and defended, the better the end reward will be. There are four cases we're targeting with additional rewards. Successful assaults, flipping control of the objective. Uh, for anyone who's brand new to World v. World, flipping just means that it changes sides. Like it was uh, the green team's resource camp, you captured it, now it's the red team's resource camp. And then five minutes later, when you're not looking, they might flip it back, and now it's greens again. That's that's flipping. Successful defenses. Repel the attacker's events, which end after three minutes. So I wonder if that means every three minutes this restarts, so you're getting a reward every three minutes that you're getting attacked. Uh, unsuccessful defenses. Losing the objective when the attackers successfully take control of it. Additionally, we want failed assaults to be rewarded in this fashion. This is currently not functioning, and we're working on it for a future update. That's kind of cool. So if you're attacking but you don't manage to breach the defenses, you get something. The system is tied to existing events and uses all the participation rules of that system. The objective scaling reward system is intended to reward players regardless of success or failure of the activity. Actively participating is the key. Sounds good, right? What's changing? First off, this system doesn't touch camps, the Doliac events, or other aspects of World v. World. It's only for attacking or defending the event objectives at Towers, Keeps, and Castles. Ah, eh, bummer, but uh, it makes sense. Camps can be flipped by one single person, so they want these events to be for stuff that usually requires at least a group. Uh, towers can be flipped solo if you're doing some cheesy stuff, but uh, I think we kind of get what they're going for here. Secondly, the requirements to earn different tiers of rewards in these events have changed. It will take more our, uh, it will take more active participation in the form of defeating guards and opposing players and or standing in the circle to complete the capture process to achieve silver and gold tier rewards. There are two reasons for it. It was necessary to make the objective scaling rewards differences meaningful, and secondly, some of these events were awarding things in an inconsistent manner. This was mostly invisible due to the ease of getting gold tier rewards in general, so it was never really flagged as an issue until now. Lastly, in terms of rewards per time spent, for active participants, this system will provide significantly better rewards, including rare equipment bags, World v. World skirmish claim tickets, or even Grandmaster Mark Shards. Um, I gotta say, I'm kind of surprised at the rarity of Grandmaster Mark Shards. Like, in my bank right now, I think I've got like maybe 10 Grandmaster Mark Shards from World v. World, but then I also have t 10 full Grandmaster Marks from PvP. Like, if you're playing ranked PvP and you also play ranked World v. World, you get Grandmaster Marks insanely more quickly from PvP. Kind of surprised that there's such a disparity, but World v. World is kind of just like attendance-based. Um, just an observation. The claim tickets is interesting. I wonder if this goes above your weekly cap or your uh your your weekly cap. 
Uh, so for example, if you're trying to get World v. World Legendaries, one of the most limiting factors for how much time it's going to take to make either the Ring Conflux, the Backpack Warbringer, or any of the armor is the tickets. And you can only get so many tickets from the boxes each week, and then and the amount of time it takes to do that is insane. Uh, if you get more from this, then assuming you're going for, you know, uh, max participation, you could get uh, something in, like, get one of the legendaries in less time than it used to take. Um, why the change? We have several goals for this system. Primarily, it's a way to increase and improve rewards for active play in World v. World. We think of active play as meaningfully contributing to team success and engaging enemy players for control of map objectives. This player interaction is the lifeblood of World v. World, and incentivizing participation is always at the forefront of our decision-making process. Another goal is to incentivize battles. By improving the reward system to key events, specifically defense, and scaling those rewards based on participation and upgrade status, we anticipate players will engage in more direct conflict as opposed to moving from one undefended objective to another. Um, I, I like the sound of that. Um, I, World v. World, I would say of all the game modes in Guild Wars 2, World v. World is probably the one I do the least often. I do do it. He said, do you? I do do it, but less often than pretty much everything else. And it's just because I get bored quickly. I go through there and see if you've got two groups that can't kill each other, then what happens is they just like flip, 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 flip. And, and they just like orbit each other, flipping everything. And it's, I find it dull. You know, they're like, cap the tower, cap the camp. They cap the tower, go back to the tower, cap the tower. They kept the camp, go back to the camp, cap the camp. Okay, they, took, they took the tower and it's just on and on and on and on. Um, so if this encourages people to actively clash into each other, I think that's a cool thing. We'll see if it works. We're aware this is a big change and we may not have nailed the exact breakpoints for various reward tiers. So we'll be watching closely and adjusting as needed to ensure that this system achieves what we would like to. Your participation and feedback are vital to this process, so please let us know what you think. When are objective scaling rewards coming? This will release February 14th, 2023. That's tomorrow, chat. That is tomorrow. By the time this gets up on YouTube, it might be today. Conclusion. We're very excited about the coming year and are very eager to see how everyone reacts to the changes and events we have planned. Summary. The Objectives Reward Scaling System will be released February 14th, 2023. The system is tied to the existing events and uses all the participation rules of that system. It's only for attacking or defending the hard objectives of towers, keeps, and castles. This, uh, the requirements to earn different tiers of rewards have changed. See you on the battlefield, Floyd, Cecil, and the World v. World team. So, uh, very sad to see that the main thing I knew of as a problem, where supports don't hardly get any you know, loot or in the in the battles um, has not been touched and this isn't related to that at all. Uh, I don't think this is a bad change. I view this as kind of a tweak, you know? Um, it's not a bad thing. I, I, I feel like there was other things that were probably more glaring to work on, but maybe this was an easy thing to fix. Uh, so if, if it was an easy thing to fix, then you know maybe that's why they decided to go ahead and tackle it. So we'll have to see how it works out. And uh, who knows, it might end up really good if it encourages teams that were previously too scared to attack or defend and they were just like avoiding each other. Maybe now they'll be like, hey, we might die, but we're going to get paid well. <laughs> and then this will encourage them to actually fight each other. That would be that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. So, yeah, uh, as always, I'll have a link in the description to this if you uh, missed anything or you want to see it yourself. And uh, if you got any questions, problems, thoughts or concerns on this, uh, be sure to put them in the comments down below.